Okay. This is my mom. Mom, don't have film me, you know? So, no, no, it's okay. It's a documentary, so it's real life. You look very nervous. Look, because they took grandma to park, valet park, with mama. Valet is right here. Yeah, I know, they took the car with mama and in it. Oh my God, the valet took, wow. the valet parking took the car and parked it and my grandma is in the car. We're in a room that looks like this. What would go with this? A vampire film. A friend of mine said, you know, my, my friend Lily is working on a film. She's developing a movie that's a vampire film. I think you'd really love it. And she sent the script. And I fell in love with it. It had all these genre elements. It was about a vampire. But it was also really a love story. The idea that it was going to be shot in black and white, the fact that it was in Farsi. All of these elements were maybe things that would have scared other people, uh, you know, looking to invest in something from a commercial standpoint. But for us, it was, it was absolutely everything that, that we wanted to be a part of. That's clear. We all met with Lily and, you know, her personality is infectious. I heard about the film and then I read the script and saw this world of characters and yeah. people and it all just bounced off the page. It's so She's extraordinary. She's a vampire dog. <laughs> I've been saying it's a vampire western, but it references so many things. And musically, visually, the, the whole vampire milieu, it's all referenced, it's all there. It's really unlike anything I've, I've seen. When I was little, I was just like, watch westerns with my dad all the time, because it's all he ever wanted to watch. Like, I prefer Sergio Leone stuff, like the kind of bee look, that kind of stuff, which everybody loves now. And then vampires, man, I told you, I love vampires. I feel like I gotta go shout it from a rooftop. I read Interview with a Vampire when I was really small, and, and then I just got like hardcore addicted to Anne Rice and cracked out on all of those books. I put on this chador. It was a prop from another film. The moment I put it on, it was like instantly like, oh, clearly this is an Iranian vampire. This is what it would be. It would be this girl and this chador, and it's a brilliant disguise. Um, and the whole movie kind of grew around her. I'm attracted to those characters, and I'm attracted to the idea of the rejects and the misfits having their own kind of sonnet. It's like, okay, it's a bad city, it's this ghost town, there's this like pile of dead bodies in town, there's a vampire there like lurking around, and there's prostitution, and that's a drug addicts, lots of lost souls, and people that like got dealt a shitty hand. I always loved like the loneliness of a vampire. Yeah, the, the notion of living forever, I think, has always fascinated me. Yeah. Because I read Dracula when I was a teenager. I think the thing I loved about Dracula was I thought I was going to be reading a novel that was a horror novel. And yeah. that it was going to be filled with vampire lore. But it's he's not. He's a sad, lonely... It's a, it's a love story. Really? That's like what that shot where he's walking up behind her. I think the, the reason it has so much power and pull is because like all the electricity and magic is in this like space between us. Mm -hmm. Once you do it, it's like kind of like, you know, popping the balloon. You know, it's like how long can you hold it there? I love the quiet of the night time. It reminds me, have you, have you seen Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love? I have, the, yeah. Because that movie's Tension. all about restraint. And how unbelievably charged the moment before you touch somebody yeah. is. <laughs> it's so powerful. Yeah. There's like so many movies I like and like parts of, but it's not as common for movies to be like timelessly 
visitable and like you're always forever a fan and a spectator like not a filmmaker looking at it and thinking about it that way just audience member like enjoying the joy of it it's pulp fiction back to the future one and two which i equate into one film michael jackson's thriller and then what was the other one? Oh, pfft, duh, Wild at Heart. It's so savage and romantic and freaky. I was referencing it a lot when I was making Girl. I think I might be referencing it for the rest of my filmmaking life. It's everything I want a movie to be. David Lynch, that dude is like, I don't know if you have heroes. He's a fucking, to me, a hero. He's a magnificent and special, violently singular man who is just like a fucking, gift. He's just like, I gotta be me, you know? That's it. He's just him. And his movies, they get under your skin, you know? It's like you get brain laced. It's next level shit. I was in Berlin when I thought of making Girl. And it's just like, I just want to make a movie where every second of what I see and hear people say is shit that I love. Like crazy fucking boner shit that I love, you know? And then it was like, boom, the script came out. It was like, vampire, Sheila. I was like, it's gotta be Sheila and Arash, who I met there. And so I was like, oh, I've got all these ingredients and they're all delicious. And like, so this could be a really nice dish. Sheila, there's a lot of myself I see in her. Like, sometimes I feel like she's like my little sister. Oh, that milkshake. It was a bad idea. Why did you want me to play the part? <laughs> I mean, it was you. It was never not you. She's so easy to slip into. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> She's so, fucking dope, man. Sometimes when I'm scared for some reason, I kind of channel her a little yeah. bit. Like if I'm walking late at night home or so, and, I, and I'm feeling a little on edge. Hey. Especially like right after the movie, I remember like I would just kind of just be like, "I'll fuck, fuck you up, yeah. <laughs> I'll flip the script." 